Hey everyone, Sumo Spiffy here. I'll have the tier list recap out tomorrow, because I wanted to first touch on this dual news about the elimination of size requirements and the big Makushita head start guys could get from winning amateur competitions. I'm a little late to the party, so I'm guessing a lot of people watching this know the basic news. So, I'm going to try and pull together scattered comments and opinions and try to make some sense out of all this. If you're new or new-ish to sumo, you might not have even been aware of the height and weight requirements. Basically, if a guy wasn't at least 167 centimeters, or between 5'5 and 5'6 for us imperial dorks, and at least 67 kilos, or 147 to 148 pounds, they weren't supposed to be allowed into pro sumo. I say supposed because there are instances of guys really working to get around the requirements. Even Kiho might not measure up, depending on where you get your stats, but they let him in anyway. Now, anyone of any size can join the pro scene. So, why do this? Is it in the hopes that they might get more guys like Kiho competing at the higher ranks? Eh, probably not. Kiho's injuries the last two Bashos aren't due to his height, but it's not hard to see how he, like Midori Fuji and Enho, is likely going to be competitive at high ranks only when he's fully healthy. In sumo, that's a tough bar to clear year after year after year. What they're more likely hoping for is that this will help fill out the lower ranks. To some degree, and I apologize that I can't give credit to the people who I learned this from because I can't find the comments anymore, sumo is viewed as a type of social welfare for young men who need it. That being the case, it's far more likely the JSA just wants to keep sumo from continuing to shrink and, preferably, start puffing up the numbers a bit. It'll probably take a lot of 5-3 dudes entering the sport for one of them just to become a Sekitori and earn a real salary, much less win a Jurio Championship, hit Makauchi, and so on. But all those other 5-3 guys can serve roles within the stables for as long as their careers last. The allowance pay they get might not be much, but that on top of not having to worry about room and board means a lot to some people. A lot of us who mainly watch the sport at the most competitive levels feel, or have felt at some point, that sumo would benefit from an influx of wrestlers from anywhere and getting rid of the rule of only allowing one foreign wrestler per stable would be the best way to help the sport grow again. But Japan in general makes it pretty difficult to immigrate and set up a life there. If they view sumo as a way to help young people who might not have a better way to take care of themselves, it also makes sense that they might take a dim view of bringing in a bunch of wrestlers from elsewhere who then become the beneficiaries of the system. Points of view on that point of view aside, I hope it works. I think it'd be fun to watch a bunch of shorter dudes dashing around making Jonadon level highlight reels, but it's hard to see a sport suffering from image issues that include bullying draw in a whole lot of wrestlers who would be smaller than everyone else in the house. The second piece of news is a way bigger deal to those of us who mainly, or only, watch the upper divisions. Nobody gets a super big head start anymore at Makushita 10 or Makushita 15, no matter what they do in amateur. The best they can do is start at Makushita 60, the bottom of the division. The flip side is that, whereas before it was either you're an amateur champ starting at high Makushita, or a good amateur starting at the bottom of Sandanme, the fourth division, now more wrestlers will qualify for starting at Makushita 60. So it's worse for champions, but better for very good amateurs. When this news broke, it made no sense to almost anyone. First of all, allowing a wider array of wrestlers to start at Makushita 60 could have been done without removing the high Makushita start for amateur champs. Secondly, this super promotion, if you will, has been in place since 2001, with 24 wrestlers taking advantage of it. Of those, only four failed to ever leave Makushita, and in three of those four cases, injuries were directly linked to their early fades. Thus, it absolutely cannot be argued that wrestlers weren't successful starting at high Makushita. So what gives? Well, as I was starting to put this video together, Chris Sumo released an update and said that, apparently, this decision was made at the behest of the coaches, especially the older ones. I'm not going to just recite what he says, I recommend watching his video, but I guess the older coaches are grumpy they're not getting the hot new recruits. Before 2021, nobody had gotten the big head start since 2017. Since 2021, all four guys to start at Makushita 10 or 15 have gone to young coaches. Chris is a good source, but he's only one source, and news from any single source should always be taken with a grain of salt until it's backed up elsewhere. Still, if this is true, it's completely bonkers. The high Makushita start was essentially a marker of someone being a high-level talent. 
Making them start at the bottom of Makushita, though, doesn't make them any less talented. And if the best young wrestlers want to join the younger coaches with the big shiny stables, what can this possibly do to convince them to go anywhere else? Do the older coaches think Hakuo, Kaseno Sato, Kodoshu, and so on aren't going to recognize top-level guys just because they're not getting a mega head start on their careers? There are a couple other potential reasons, though, to be clear, neither are mutually exclusive with the older coaches being grumpy about losing talent. One is that they might expect future pros to join the ranks sooner if they've already done well as amateurs and there's nothing to be gained by chasing an amateur title. Hakuoho took a day job so he could go for the corporate title and get that head start, so it's not a completely illogical sentiment. But a lot of these top guys are university graduates, and it's not likely many of them are going to drop out of school to join the pros earlier just because winning a university championship doesn't reap the same reward. So I don't know how much of an effect this will have. Maybe they're trying to find a lot of different angles for expanding the Banzuke, and if this only brings in a few extra wrestlers early, that's still something. Two is that they want the top guys to be more invested in Rikishi life, including being an attendant, than can really happen if they only spend one or two tournaments in Makushita. Hakuoho accepted continuing to be an attendant after his immediate promotion, but it's not required, and not everyone would do that. This reason might be a culture thing, but it could happen at the expense of getting young talent into the spotlight. Now, I'm not talking about guys like Hakuoho and Onosato, who dominated Makushita. They'll make the leap pretty quickly anyway. I mean guys like Kiho and Oshoma. It took them five and four Bashos respectively to reach Jurio just from Makushita 15, but they're clearly capable of staying in Jurio at the very least. How long would they have had to trudge through Makushita if they started at the bottom? More to the point, how much of an unnecessary injury risk is there when fighting below your level for too long against guys who see you as someone they absolutely have to go all out to beat? Are these guys going to gain a better appreciation for the full gamut of stable life in that extra time enough that it's worth this type of risk? It's possible the Kiho and Oshoma examples tie into the push for future pros to join early. If someone thinks they can win in Makushita but not necessarily tear it to pieces, maybe they hop in sooner to hit that salary level more quickly, and in the process, they spend that extra time in an attendant role learning the life. That could be what the JSA is going for with this change. But we're still talking about a sport that, fun as it is to watch, is less and less of a draw for the young men that could succeed in it. A growing problem for American football is that, as the health risks become more apparent, parents are more frequently nudging their kids away from it at young ages. Parents in Japan are doing the same in regards to sumo for similar reasons. The NFL isn't doomed to fail, of course, not when there's such a substantial amount of money to be made playing in the league for even a short time, but sumo has similar risks, a more demanding lifestyle, and far less reward. If that calculus doesn't change, it's hard to see the health of pro sumo improving no matter what other changes they try. There's your happy thought for the day. Again, tier list recap coming tomorrow. Have a great day, and I'll see you soon.